Mile IQ from Microsoft is the perfect app if you need to track your mileage. In this video, we are going to look at what Mile IQ is, how much does it cost, how to get it, how do you use it, and then we'll look at the app itself and the web dashboard that you can use on your desktop. Hi, this is Steve Stays, and the aim of my videos is to help you make your computing experience easier. So, what is Mile IQ? For independent contractors, or if you drive for Uber, delivery services, etc., this app will help you track your mileage to expense it appropriately. Mile IQ captures your drives automatically using the GPS on your phone, classifies them easily so that you can differentiate between personal or business use, and the reporting is exceptionally good. The big question always is how much does it cost? But with Mile IQ, there are a couple of different ways to get it. One is with the basic subscription, which doesn't cost anything, but you can only do up to 40 drives a month or track up to 40 drives a month. The unlimited version costs $5.99 a month if you pay it month by month or roughly about $60 a year if you pay it as a yearly subscription. However, there is a better way to get it, and that is if you have an existing Microsoft 365 subscription. Specifically, it is included with the Microsoft 365 Business Standard Business Premium, E3, and E5 subscriptions. All you need to do in this case is download the app and sign in with your Microsoft 365 account, and it should automatically enable all the features for you. To get Mile IQ on your Android phone, simply head over to your Google Play app, look for Mile IQ, and download it. Similar process for an Apple iPhone. Just open up the Apple Store. Look for Mile IQ, download it, and you're good to go. Using the Mile IQ app is really, really easy. Just be sure when you do set it up that you allow a permission to run in the background. That way it tracks your GPS coordinates so that Mile IQ can run without you having to do anything. When you see the app icon on your screen, you notice a little red circle in the top right corner. That is how many drives you've had that haven't yet been classified according to business or personal use. Open up the app. And I'll quickly reconnect it to my account. All the drives that I haven't yet classified, you'll see in the list here. If I click on the drive and drag it over to the left-hand side, you'll see it's coming up with a blue line there that allows me to specify it as a personal use drive. If I release my finger, here are all the categories that you can set up. I've only specified three, but you can do as many as you like. If you drag it over the opposite way, to the right hand side, you'll see it classifies it as business and all the categories that you've created for a business application. If I drag it over, there we go, that's automatically gone as business, business, business. And my final one, if you click on these three lines at the top left hand corner, you will have some of the options in the app itself. You have your monthly summaries, which you can email to yourself once you've set up your which account it's going to. Um, you also have some account settings, which account you've signed in with, your drive detection method, and I've got mine just on all the default settings, which to me has worked out pretty good. Uh, my subscription, as you can see, it's the Office 365. You can set up name locations for favorite places that you go to, then it automatically classifies them for you. You can also specify how many vehicles, what kind of vehicles, so whether you're switching between them, your mileage rates that you're being reimbursed for. Mine's on the Canadian default, which is 58 cents for the first 5,000 kilometers and then 52 cents after that. Now you can do metric, which is kilometers, or slide your scroll bar here over to get do it in miles. If you enable work hours, this is a really handy feature. In work hours, it will always classify the drives as business use or Outside of those hours, it'll classify them automatically as personal use. Makes it so much easier for when you're just using a vehicle for personal use. There are more settings which we'll look at in the actual web application. But for now, as you can see, the, the app itself is really, really easy to use. Once you've signed into dashboard.mileiq.com, this is the initial page that you'll be presented with. All the drives that you just classified in your phone will show up in the bottom of the window on the left hand side. If you want to combine drives, you can select the boxes on the left here. And then on the right, you'll see you've got two drives selected. And there's an option here to join the two drives. 
So depending whether you've stopped or not stopped, or whatever the case is, you may find that you want to join your drives into one, which I often do because I like one entry per day, which is for business use. If you classify your drive on your phone under the wrong category, here's where you can change it. So if it was a personal drive, you can certainly click on personal, change it to the right category or business, the same thing there. You can also make any corrections, including adding any parking fees you may have paid or any toll fees you may have paid, because those are all reimbursed. On the top, some of the settings that you'll change, the main area that you'll deal with anyway, is under drives, your vehicle and odometer, what vehicle you have. Typically for tax purposes, you need the start odometer reading of the year and the end odometer reading. As long as you have those, you'll stay in the good graces of your friendly tax man. Under mileage rates, here's where again, where we can change it from miles to kilometers. And you can specify a custom reimbursement rate in case your company gives you a different rate. By default, it will choose the country that you're in and the default of that particular country. Under auto classification, that's uh, whether or not you wanted to classify your frequent drives automatically. Your work hours, if you have a regular work hour or not, you can specify a more complex schedule and you can add and remove time windows, weekends, etc. according to your purposes. Under custom purposes, this is where you get to specify a different options for personal or for business. And when you classify your drives as either, it is based off of what you've got in here. So certainly come through this and make all the changes that you need. Under reports on the top, here's where you can email a report. You can create a custom report to email it. And that helps you to, to get proper reimbursement for your mileage. Having seen the app in action, I am sure that you can see how easy it is to use and how it can help you track your mileage. This should help keep you out of the crosshairs of the IRS, Revenue Canada, etc. when submitting business expenses. Thanks for popping by. Have a great day and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so.